Kenyatta. Good morning, everyone. Um, so, understanding the history of Cooperation Jackson is to understand the legacy of the Black Liberation Movement. And the Black Liberation Movement has three main trends, right? And so you have the trend of repatri you know, repatriation or, you know, the Back to Africa Movement, also known as Pan-Africanism, where African people in this country feel that it's very important that um, our return to the continent and reunification with the continent um, will bring about uh, freedom, self-determination for um, African people here. And then there are other folks that believe that you know radical integrationalism or that there is a way to change the system, that it is fundamentally flawed and that through um, political action and you know reform or what have you, there's a way to um, incorporate ourselves into um, American in, in a way. And then you have um, new African independence or nationalism that believes that we have a stake here, we have a legacy, we are a nation of people over 500 years in, in cultivation from our culture to our, you know, to the language to, um, you know, our interactions on a land base makes us a nation and that we deserve land and we deserve the ability to self-determine. And so um, the Malcolm X grassroots movement comes out of that trend. So out of the New African Independence Movement, we have to understand that our struggle is land-based. And then if we look at the land base that's the most significant to us, we look at um, the southern region, right? Also known as the Black Belt South, which makes up a little bit more than five states, but we kind of focus in on these five particular states, Jackson, Mississippi being one of them, that's very significant to um, an ancestral land base, to the labor, are basically ancestral blood as well as um, the politics, the food, etc., the culture that has been significant to us. So when we focus in on Jackson, Mississippi, and we're starting to begin to understand the politics, and one of our founding members, um, rest in peace, Baba Shokwe Lumumba, and his contributions overall to the Black Liberation Movement, and specifically as, um, as an attorney um, for human rights, the opportunity was there for us to seize um, state power as a, as a vehicle to build out a cooperatives movement and an economic movement. And so people think about, um, you know, sort of the politics coming for it first, or you think about um, the types of changes that, you know, are happening throughout the country. But if you're not basing it in economics and also land and ecology, especially when you're looking at the southern region and particularly Jackson, Mississippi, then you're missing out. Because part of the um, way that white supremacy and racism works there is, is very economic, right? It's completely disempowering and um, fully excluding African people or new African people from um, participation in economics. And so Cooperation Jackson and even the, um, the New Economies Conference was a way to pinpoint that and to look at what are the different methods, methodologies, approaches, and relationships that can be built to transform the economics and then so transform the lives of um, new African people in Jackson, which is you know, 85% of the population there and yet um, control little to none of the way that money flows within the city. Um, so ultimately, we were able to win through various campaigns from running Baba Shokwe Lumumba for uh, city council and then again for mayor. And so with having that power, we're looking at um, state power. You're looking at an economic vehicle via Cooperation Jackson, and then you're also looking at um, people's assemblies as a way to build power and a way to um, connect to the grassroots. So Cooperation Jackson was specifically created to be that economic vehicle to talk about how do you create um, land-based power um, in Jackson and then use that as a model for other places throughout the South. And so connecting with multiple other cooperative, you know, cooperatives, um, many that are land and farm based, some that are rural, 
was really important to the strategy and also understanding what is the relationship between people um, collectively and their economics and how do you transform uh, folks' understanding of what it means to have your labor disenfranchised intergenerationally and then begin to uh, think of yourself as an owner or an equal investor and having a land base and being able to cultivate from that land base whereas you've been a part of an extractive economy for, you know, for generations. So that's part of the work that's happening there. Right now the Freedom Farms Cooperative is one of the um, main focuses of you know, of this federation of cooperatives. The other one is an arts and cultural cooperative looking at engaging a lot of students and a lot of artists and really making it attractive to um, self-determine, you know, as opposed to, you know, again, when you have the memory and intergenerational memory of being a labor force of, you know, extractive wealth for others, that's a part of your routine. So how do you create um, a situation, especially for young people, where it's becoming more attractive to be self-determined? Um, and then the other cooperative that's being worked on simultaneously is around daycare and really looking at how do you engage parents and also a lot of single women that have been excluded from being able to involve themselves in politics because of raising families and put them central to them by creating a space where, you know, you're able to use, you know, your natural, um, what you're doing, you know, within your own time frame, raising your family and taking care of children as a means to build yourself economically and connect um, throughout the network. So that's some of the work that's being done. It's definitely far from perfect. It's definitely in conversation with multiple other cities and trends, um, Madrigan USA as well as um, International has definitely, you know, kind of homed in and focused in on seeing it as a case study and trying to understand how it can um, not be as isolated as it has been and not, uh, you know, that we haven't wanted it not to be, but more that the city and various powers have worked to isolate um, Cooperation Jackson and, and see it as a threat to other economic systems, so dealing with those politics as well.